Hi everyone. I have a new camera, as you can tell, and so I am trying to get used to looking at a different place when I'm talking. So if I'm looking down instead of up, it's because I'm used to looking at my little laptop camera, and now I have um, a camera that a client gifted me, and so we're working with getting used to that, guys. So happy spring. Um, if it's been a long winter for you, please know I feel your pain, and I am just like you ready for the warmer weather and it's actually starting to get a little bit warmer here in New England even though it's been very rainy the last few days and it's going to continue that way so um, at least the weather is warmer and it's feeling more like spring is actually here we're starting to lose all of the snow build up from this winter so um, I thought get back into videos with everybody's favorite video which is like the seasonal deck video um, so <sighs> I, I don't know, this isn't like my biggest list of decks ever, even though I've got all of my decks um, at last in my home. Um, I have been working with like a select few, and some of this is because I'm doing some wonderful tarot mentoring um, work with people. And so uh, I've been l accessing different decks a little bit more in order to like hold a space and bring wisdom to a space of, of learning, which has been really enjoyable. Um, and, and the other ones are decks that I either thought I had lost that I managed to find or just ones that feel really comforting and loving to me. So I think I will start with, of course, the Tarot of Vampires. You guys know that this one's always on my list of decks that I'm using. And, you know, it's one that just reads so well for me. And I have such a relationship with it now. You guys know, I think in the winter video I had done about this or early winter, um, you know, I teared up and I was talking about the relationship that I have with this deck. It's just really, really, we've been together for a very long time. We know each other well. It's um, the best long-term relationship in my life. Um, it's just a deck that is is a best friend as well as a lover and like always there whenever I need conversation. Um, and working in a mentoring program to using this has been fascinating also to see the way that the deck communicates with other people and how certain images bring up feelings for other people, which is really beautiful as well. So this is the Tarot of Vampires. Of course, as you guys know, you knew that that was going to make that list. I very, very rarely, it's a rare occasion that I don't use that deck on the daily. Um, the other... Let me just see this is upside down when I grabbed it. Okay. So the other deck that, and this one is primarily because it's so comforting to me, is the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Um, I have been working with this now since it came out on nearly a daily basis. And this deck is just really clear, insightful, and honestly, the artwork is, I'm showing some reversals here just so beautiful that it's one that I can't imagine not working with or, and not having in my life. And it's also accessible as well for people. So it's not scary. It's, it's a comforting deck that's going to kind of hold your hand while it tells you the truth. And you know, maybe you don't, this is one of my favorite images in the deck. Maybe you don't want to hear that truth. Sorry guys, the fatigue but you need to and this deck will will do that holding your hand not um smacking you over the head right but it's still telling you something that you need to hear then i'll stop there because i love that image so mystical shaman oracle is again another one and that's been on my list pretty solidly since again i got the deck um it's just really really beautiful to forge a relationship with that one and so if it's one you have in your in your collection and maybe it's been a slow starter for you I would encourage you to give it a go like keep coming back to it because something happens where it like blossoms I did have like a sticking point probably around the six month mark of using that deck where I needed a little break from it but once I moved through that kind of sticking point, it really, really blossomed. And now it's a deck that I use 
pretty much daily. Um, and for about a year and a half, I drew daily from that deck. So there's something to be said for doing daily draws with a deck, even if you have a difficult time with it. If you are wanting to build a relationship with a deck, daily draws are a really, really great way to do that because through various moods, you're still connecting with it and it, it provides um, insight for you into yourself, but also the mood of the deck too, which is wonderful. So the next, um, boy, I brought everybody on the table upside down today. The next deck that I'm using is the Chicoli Tarot. Getting a lot out of this through discussion and conversation and like just pieces that I hadn't pulled out, hadn't sussed out for myself from working with this deck in a, a friendship mentoring situation have gotten so much more out of really having to like spend time with this deck and get into the nitty gritty with it. It's a great, great, great deck for journeying. And if you're looking to kind of go on your own journey with tarot, and you're willing to go to some uncomfortable stuck places inside of yourself in order to do that, this deck is wonderful for that. Uh, just really, really um, fascinating what comes up from doing shadow work with this. And it's one of the top decks I would recommend for shadow work because it is um, so willing to go into the discomfort in the nitty gritty and the gross. And it's unapologetic about that so it's essential if you're someone who is wanting to do shadow work and you're not triggered by it now for some people if you end up getting triggered by a deck then I would say that Chicoli Tarot you know is not necessarily one that you want to um, I'm just looking for my favorite image in the deck I always show you guys this one you need to be careful if it's triggering in a way that's unhealthy but as long as it's pushing you in a good way, the Chicoli Tarot is wonderful for doing some really uncomfortable personal investigation, especially into aspects of self that we want to avoid or things that feel uncomfortable. So in, whenever I do a reading and Chicoli is involved, something fascinating always ends up happening. And often what I've been doing with her lately is using her as a clarification deck more than the main deck, and that's been really interesting too. The other, let's see, I still have two tarot decks left. Um, the other deck I've been using is Journey into the Hidden Realms Tarot. I'm not sure if I'm saying that name, that correctly, but uh, when I moved in, for some reason, this one went up on my bureau altar, and I forgot how beautiful this deck is. And through using it in some client readings over the last couple weeks, again, too, I have just, I forgot how this deck for me, it's not Rider Waite Smith meanings. This deck is much more about what the energies are saying when you pull. So for me, it's been really like just, oh, oh my God, the images are so beautiful. Uh, Julia, it's Julia Jeffries right here did the artwork. Um, it just like so stunning. There's such emotion in the images. And so I read much more intuitively with this tarot deck than I would as far as Rider Waite Smith typical meanings go for the most part. And the guidebook is wonderful to this too. So if you're on the fence about purchasing this or you're, you know, you have it and you're not sure how to connect with it, I would recommend giving the guidebook a solid read. I did a solid read all the way from front to back when I first got this deck. And that was helpful for me as well too, because Barbara Moore does bring in some different, I love this image of Three of Swords, uh, different, um, Elements based on the artwork, which really assist you in understanding the tone and the feel of the deck. And then I think you can really go off on your own intuitive journey with it in a very powerful way. So that's Journey into the Hidden Realms Tarot. Really, really been having a new love affair with this deck. And uh, like I said, I'm really sad that I don't have my first edition because the cardstock was matte and like kind of soft in this really beautiful way. And this is like shiny and slippery and kind of cheap feeling, this newer edition. I'm very sad about that, but working with that deck has meant a lot to me. And it's one that I intend to devote some quality time to with just like I did uh, ended up doing with the Chicoli Tarot 
over the early spring and it, that meant a lot to me. I thought that I had lost this deck. Um, it's the it's the independently produced Latero de Femoratique. I know I'm saying it wrong. I apologize for butchering that title. I thought I had lost this and magically she reappeared and I have been so thankful because as part of my own healing journey, as many of you know, over the last four months, working with her has really helped me examine my own sexual wounds, reclaim aspects of my sexuality and my sensuality, um, parts of myself that I had maybe really divorced myself from over the last two years where I've really been able to kind of call them back with this deck and bring in a lot of joy to my spiritual practice as well, a sensuality and a sexuality to my spiritual practice, which has really been refreshing because, you know, we can tend to like get into a rut and, and always do something a certain way. And so what's beautiful is when we bring in a different deck, sometimes that's that opportunity for fresh air, for a fresh um, perspective for a new way of looking at something, right? Like, especially for me with this deck, the chariot lately, this, the, the photography chosen for the chariot has helped me to look at the chariot in a slightly different way. I typically read the chariot as choice and home and that kind of thing. But working with this deck, I'm, I'm examining it in kind of like a lighter way where it doesn't need to have the heaviness that the chariot tends to have for me when I read with it typically. So I've really enjoyed that like breath of fresh air, sacred sensuality, sacred sexuality energy that she's calling back in for me. And you know, when you kind of realize for yourself like, wow, there's something I really let go of here. Whether that's because you were in a codependent relationship or I don't know, you got into this place with your career and you got sidetracked from this like piece of yourself and you're calling that back in, that this deck really does that very beautifully. And I am unsure, I believe it is out of print because when I thought that I had lost this deck, I had looked to purchase it and I was not able to find it again. But I am not sure about that. So if you don't have this deck and you're looking to purchase it, I, I, I am unsure where to, what direction to send you to. And I just wanna say that now in case somebody messages me and asks, um, it's, I wouldn't know what direction to send you in other than I purchased that deck, this deck on Etsy like four years ago, I think. So I will say that. So I have two decks left guys. I didn't do too bad. You know, like some of these videos are like an hour long because I like have 15 decks to show you. I've had like a solid rotation of these decks and it's felt really, really good for me the last couple of weeks as I, as spring has started to like really step into play here for us up here in New England. So, uh, the Heart of Fairy Oracle, this is a deck that I, sorry guys, I need to take a sip of tea. This is a deck that I have had a very, very long love affair with, but I cannot work with her constantly, unlike say the Mystical Shaman Oracle, where I can have a daily relationship with that one. Heart of Fairy flows in and out for me because it's such a strong deck. It's like bourbon or something like that or I mean, like a strong drink or scotch right like you enjoy it but you can't drink that every day like that's an okay that's something that is like a there's a a sexiness to that right and like a headiness to that that when you are engaging in that like it becomes a ritual it's its own thing and and you that you you, you don't do that every day right heart of fairy oracle is like that for me so I will work with her for a couple months and then we will take a step away from each other because I'll need to take a step back because she's so strong and so clear and so in your face. Like she is going to kick your teeth in. Whereas Mystical Shaman, um, is it Mystical? I always called the wrong thing. I'm pretty sure it's Mystical Shaman Oracle. I always want to call it the Mythic Shaman Oracle and it's not it's Mystical. Whereas that one is going to hold your hand and tell you the truth. Heart of Fairies Oracle is going to, like, you know, if you're not listening to her, she'll bust your lip open, right? She is just going to tell you the truth. And because she is focused on relationships, not, you don't have to just do relationship reads with her. But it tends to be a situation where relationship aspects will come up, whether that's in shadow or light. And typically when she shows me something in shadow, she's dead on. And sometimes that can be a little daunting, right? Like, we also have to be honest with ourselves about when we're not ready to hear the truth about something maybe 
So you have to approach her knowing that if you're going to ask a question, she's going to answer it whether you want that answer or not. You ask the question, so you have to be ready to hear the answer. But this deck is so beautiful. And for those of you who have it and love it, like I think you either love this deck or you hate this deck. This is like your deck or it's not. It's very polarizing, much like Tarot of Vampires. And I don't know, she's like perfectly broken in. She's just like, you get just like, I, mm, I just love her. She's truly, truly beautiful. So, but I have been working with her regularly, not daily, but regularly for the last few weeks. I've really been getting a lot of wisdom from her and in your faceness, which I have needed and, and am deeply thankful for. So the last deck on the list will probably not be a surprise to you, but she is a surprise to me. And I say that because um, I have not really worked with the Isis Oracle since last year. Um, I had had to, I don't know why, but I had to like take some time off from working with her. And that was really difficult for me because... Um, you guys know that I consider Isis a, a patroness of mine, and um, I love working with her and feel most of the time so very, very connected to her. But part of this process for me, this healing journey was in some ways like, I don't know why, but needing to feel, I guess, disconnected, that we needed a little space from each other, um, something that I had really been putting so much of her and my energy into, we had to like shift what we were going to do working together. But recently she's come back in very strongly. And so I have picked her back up. And when I put her on the altar, I was really shocked because I, I had almost gotten to this place of like, I don't know if I'll need to use the Isis Oracle. Like has that time passed for me and, and her in this way that where we need to use this system together. But this, this oracle has come back in and been really healing for me. It's mainly been at a personal level and really um, not divination. It's more personal work. And I think that the guidebook, and I've done videos on this deck and other amazing people have done videos on this deck, so I won't go into this too long, but the guidebook really is about personal work, personal journey work. Um, it's it's not, it is a divination system and you can use it as a divination system for sure. But this deck is much more about personal journey. And so that is how I have been using her for personal journey, for journaling, for shadow, uh, not shadow work. For shadow work, it's much more been the Chicoli Tarot, um, but more for uh, understanding like where I am and getting clear about that. Because there's a place that you can go after there's been um, trauma in your life where you are just surviving and you can really get stuck in that space. And there's time where you need to stay in that space and then, and then there's time where it's time to come out of that space. And so for me, the Isis Oracle has been helping me move out of trauma brain and into actual presence in my experience. So if you're going through something like that, you may find that the Isis Oracle helps you with that. And I'm gonna do a separate video on this and kind of like get into and address this aspect as far as healing goes for all of us. But also the Sacred Rebels Oracle is another deck that can be very supportive of that process if you're in that place on your personal journey. And the Sacred Rebels almost made it to my spring list, but I kind of wanted to keep this a little more concise because I haven't been working with a plethora of decks as I sometimes do. This has been very finite for me. I mean, this would be a lot of decks for some people, but you guys know me. I'm a Taurus and I tend to go big or go home. Um, you either love that about me or you hate that about me. Um, but for me, this smaller amount has felt really appropriate. And also, you know, when you are moving through things, like you're kind of pulling your inner circle in tight sometimes and you need to be in that space. So these decks have been like my inner circle. They've got my back, I've got their back, and, and we've done a lot of really fun things together. Um, yeah, so those are my decks for spring of 2019. And a really big goal of mine has been... Um, to get outside again more because it was so, the, the winter was so tough here. It was really difficult to do that. But uh, that has finally started happening. And so I've made it back to the ocean a couple times. Um, 
gotten outside more, spent time with friends, spent some time processing healing, and am in a much better place and really thankful for just the the gifts and the blessings in my life. And you guys are a part of that, so I wanted to say thank you to you. And, uh, oh, books that I've been reading. I've been reading The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Holy hell, that's incredible. Um, I have been reading The Wonderling by Mira Bartok, which is actually a children's book, but it's like in between children's and young adult. My son and I had started reading it, and then we ended up, he lost interest. It just wasn't a place he was at. He didn't want the, the connection anymore to it. And so he was like, I'm really all set with this. And I was like, I actually want to know what happens. So I've kind of been taking a journey through that. And that's been very whimsical and lovely and refreshing. Um, and what else have I been reading? Uh, I've been reading some Neil Stevenson as well and enjoying the Baroque cycle. And that's been really enjoyable for my quiet time myself. And I have definitely been in, indulging in some coloring where I can. And, um, oh, hold on. Let me show you guys the, that book that I came out. Oh, sorry, working with. Um, so, sorry, you can see the back in there, guys. This is the, an imported book from Korea. And it's just absolutely stunning. Look at the artwork in this. Right, guys? Like, Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So I haven't actually started coloring in this yet. I'm, I'm waiting because I'll need to devote some time with it. Um, the book that I have actually started coloring in. So some of you may know that coloring is like a very relaxing experience for me and it's how I kind of process and heal. Um, so I've been working on this piece here. Um, but I'm really, I don't know why, like feeling pulled to work with the, I don't know if I've done anything else in here, but I'll show you some of the images to work with these more like anime imported type of books and uh, have the intention of, especially over the next week because my son has school vacation, I'll have more time at home with him, um, really like sitting down and finishing a couple pieces of those. So th that's been really en enjoyable for me. And I consider that a part of my spiritual practice because it is a meditative experience. And it's also a place where you can process because you, you have to go quiet. Like you're thinking about colors, you're thinking about gradation, um, you know, um, how you're going to work with your, with what you have in your medium to create a feeling, but it's not stressful because I am not creating something from scratch. Someone else has given me an outline. And so I can kind of just go to a creative place, but that's not too overwhelming. So you might find if you're working through some trauma and healing in your life as well, that coloring might be an option for you. Um, you know, and it's not about creating a masterpiece. It's actually about more the relaxation, the creative process, unplugging from social media and the laptop or the computer or the whatever and the TV and like just kind of being for a little bit. So I've also been listening to some really, really awesome music. And you guys know how important music is to me. Um, I've discovered this band called Morphine. Been listening to the Paper Kites a little bit. Um, talk, you know, just talking, it's a beautiful thing meeting new people, like getting exposed to new music and new ideas and what comes through from that. Um, listening to the Smiths a lot, which is not new for me, but just been able to listen to them. Um, some Miles Davis and of course, Charles Mingus is always on that list for me. Um, and listening to some old Ray LaMontagne, I typically listen to his newer stuff. The Ouroboros album is a big deal for me, as you guys may know from my music video. So just been kind of in that place and really exploring through music, but morphine is like, man, oh my God, one of my friends introduced me to them and I was like, how have I lived my life not listening to morphine? They're incredible. So if you feel drawn to like go explore them because they will be, if, if you're into that kind of music, like just a really, really awesome, um, awesome, awesomeness. And of course the national, listening to the national a lot too. So um, okay, I've rambled enough. That's where I am this spring, kind of what's in my practice, the decks I'm using, etc. Um, thank you so much for making it through this if you were able to. Thank you so much for your patience with me about videos. Um, I've really needed to kind of like pull in and just be where I am and um, not, I'm, I want to share very honestly and I think I've done that about this process for me, but also like needed to be a little bit protected over the last two months and I, and I had thought I was ready to step back out but I really wasn't so I thank you for your patience with me through that process um, and I am going to be doing some videos on healing from trauma 
also healing from abuse and pain and different things that can help us on that. It's not so much about blabbing about my story. It's more about tech, um, not techniques, tools that have helped me on that journey. So um, I'm sending you all, as always, much love and many blessings. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.